You're inside a small spaceship. You're flying higher and higher, then leave the atmosphere of our planet. Hundreds of thousands of satellites with glowing advertising banners appear in front of you. One of them says, Happy New Year, 5699. This year you have an anniversary. You will be 5,000 years old. You press a button on the touch panel and activate the ad block. Now you can't see any holographic banners through the glass. You're going to make a jump through space. A black tunnel called a wormhole appears in front of the ship. You fly inside and the hole disappears. The ship has teleported to the Andromeda galaxy. You discovered an exoplanet here recently, similar to Earth. It's also blue, has a lot of water, but only one huge continent. The planet is hidden in dense interstellar clouds, and you hope that other people won't find it soon. But as soon as it's entered into the intergalactic register, you'll definitely buy this planet. You call it Second Home. Now you're flying into the atmosphere, going through the clouds, and landing on a small green hill. At the foot of it, you see several small houses made of clay and stone and thatched roofs. Near the houses, locals are working in simple clothes. They're plowing the ground, and cows are eating the grass nearby. You have turned on your stealth mode, so the locals can't see you. They aren't real people. You created them using cloning technology. The conditions on this planet are now the same as they were on real Earth in the year 699, the year when everything changed for you. You remember swimming in the lake at night and looking at the stars. One star moved from its place and began to approach. A huge flash of light and something heavy fell into the water. You lost consciousness and woke up in the morning on the shore. Only a thousand years later, you realized it was a meteorite. The day after the star fell, you noticed that any damage on your body instantly disappeared. After a couple of decades, you realize that you get older slower than the rest of the people in your village. After another 50 years, you understood that you didn't age at all. Knights, Vikings, the Dark Middle Ages, the geniuses of the Renaissance, you see it all with your own eyes. You become an emperor of a huge empire, and then you get bored and decide to live in the slums to feel all the shades of this life. You think that some magic gave you immortality, but then you realize that any magic or sorcery is really science. You communicate with the greatest minds on the planet, make friends with incredibly bright people and really bad ones to understand the nature of humans. Around the 15th century, you've got all the knowledge and read all the books that people could give you by this time you begin to explore the world yourself. You discover the process of photosynthesis in plants, grasp the fundamental laws of physics, conduct amazing chemical experiments, and find out that you live on a tiny planet in an infinitely vast universe. Biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy, you learn and explore everything. The results of your scientific research in these subjects are ahead of humanity by a hundred years. While the whole world is riding horses, you're already building a car with a steam engine. To hide your identity from people, you constantly change your name and place of residence. Over a thousand years, you have learned all the languages of the world, and even those that no longer exist. You study all the psychologically known personality types. Your social and emotional intelligence is so developed that you can create a person's portrait after one minute of talking to them. You look into their eyes and understand what they want, are afraid of, or are ashamed of. You spend several years in continuous meditation to calm your mind and gain wisdom. You lead the life of a hermit and watch humanity slowly develop. But then, the 20th century comes and the life of the entire planet changes dramatically. The Industrial Revolution, the first cars and trains, cinema, radio, and television. In these hundred years, people are changing more than they have in the previous 1,500 years. Now it's hard for you to keep up with the world. New inventions appear every day and every hour. The knowledge and experience of previous years help you become one of the most influential people on the planet. World leaders listen to your opinion. Thanks to your developed communication skills, you can negotiate with any person. You go through expensive and high-quality plastic surgery operations so that no one will recognize you. You keep moving and getting a new ID every 20 years. 
you have a lot of money, as well as gold and other valuable metals that you've collected for centuries. You build houses and shelters in the most beautiful places on the planet. You finance the development of new technologies. Sometime in the 1950s, you predict that in the next century, there will be a unique network that will allow you to store all the knowledge of the world in a small device. With the help of this network, all people will be able to communicate with each other from different points of the Earth. You're surprised that the Internet appears much earlier. Developers create virtual reality worlds with photorealistic graphics. Artificial intelligence is smart enough to rule a small country. Genetic engineering allows us to clone people and mix our bodies with robots. The first cyborgs appear. With each passing century, there's less and less space on the planet. You get tired of people and consuming new technologies, and you spend more and more time in your home on the top of Mount Everest. Humanity is taking over Mars and the Moon. Soon, these places aren't enough for people too. In the fourth millennium, scientists create a quantum engine to travel through space. You're among the first people to try this technology and make the jump to another group of planets orbiting a star similar to our solar system. Your ship breaks down and you can't go back. You're left to live alone on a new planet. Your body adapts to the conditions on it so you don't need oxygen reserves. Then you learn to breathe without oxygen at all. The cells of your body receive what they need for normal functioning from the surrounding gases. Your skin is getting rougher because of the dusty atmosphere of the planet. And with the increased gravity, you develop incredible strength. You'd become a super person with such a body on Earth. You manage to send a signal into space, and you hope that humanity will catch it. You've been living alone for over 500 years without books, the internet, or any communication. You spend most of the time exploring a lifeless desert world. Using parts and tools of the ship, you create a vegetable garden. You also have a lot of water reserves. During all this time, you realize that you miss the old world and your life before the meteorite fell. Some spaceship picks up your signal and comes for you. You return to your home world. Travel between solar systems is now as easily available as travel by subway or bus. You decide to find a planet as similar to Earth as possible to recreate human life there. Using the power of modern telescopes and your knowledge of astronomy, you discover what you've been looking for in the Andromeda Galaxy Nebula. You arrive at the second home and live a human life there. For hundreds of years, you observe people and mentally go back to your past. You protect those people from external threats, like asteroids, but don't interfere in their lives. From time to time, you fly to Earth and other planets for business. Life on the second home is becoming very similar to life on Earth. There are more and more people and cultures. Technologies are emerging. You have completed your goal, and now you want to discover other worlds. You spend the next 5,000 years studying the ever-expanding universe. It's a mystery. Nobody knows exactly who created this substance. Was it nature? Or some scientist in a fancy lab somewhere? It's spreading quickly. The stuff gets into every human, animal, even the tiniest insect. All of humanity's experiencing euphoria. But that feeling won't last forever. This new molecule attaches itself to all living DNA and makes it immortal. That's how it starts. For the past few months, you've been sitting at home in an information vacuum. No internet, no TV, no news. You turned off your phone and canceled all your plans with your friends so that nobody can distract you. Only with this drastic plan will you be able to finish writing your book. You sit in your rented house on the edge of town, writing every day. You have absolutely no idea what's going on in the world. And now, finally, the book is finished. You grab your bike and head off to celebrate with a beautiful ride around town. The streets are full of people. You ride along a narrow street until you reach the town square. There's a pretty big crowd, and you accidentally crash into a young guy. You say you're very sorry, but the guy looks somehow extra happy. He says he's fine. You notice that the crowd of people is shouting positive slogans, and everyone's in a really good mood. 
You pick up your bike and look down at yourself. You seem fine, but the fall was kind of painful. Better go to the hospital, just in case, you think, and leave the square. You've never seen such an empty hospital before. You approach reception and ask for a doctor or a nurse who's ever free. The receptionist looks at you with that face that says, What's this guy's deal? You say you hurt yourself falling off a bike. Where have you been in the last few weeks? The receptionist asks. You notice that, actually, your body doesn't hurt anymore. Huh, how's that even possible? You look around and realize that there's no one else in the building except you and the weirded-out receptionist. Where are all the people? You run out into the street, pull out your phone, and read the latest news. An unusual molecule is spreading around the world, making people immortal. The human heart now beats forever. Any damage heals in a matter of minutes. There are no more diseases. Everyone's been cured. Not only that, everyone's suddenly in excellent shape. Scientists are still trying to figure out what this molecule is. But while they're doing that, people all over the world are celebrating. It's the beginning of eternal life. A year passes. Hospitals are closing all over the world. Doctors have no one left to heal. Vets are also out of work because animals also live forever now. Health insurance companies go bankrupt. So do life insurance firms. Never in all of history have people felt so safe. A year later, the economy goes crazy. In every field, the story's the same. From drivers to coal miners to psychologists to musicians to influencers. Even just working a regular cash register at the supermarket. The competition is insane. The population is way bigger. So there's thousands of people showing up to every interview. More people, more mouths. Food and clothes become even more expensive. Five years later, you can no longer go out into the city and find a quiet street to walk on. There's always a crowd of people. A huge number of new houses are built. Prices for real estate, internet, electricity, every service, it all just keeps rising. And at the same time, it's more and more difficult to earn good money. Many people just lose their jobs. Scientists are sounding the alarm. In 50 years, there'll be almost no space left on Earth. But that isn't even the main problem. Insects now live forever too. Locusts, beetles, mosquitoes, spiders, flies, there are trillions of them. Pests eat everything. Fields are empty. Bees, bats, and spiders usually help out by chomping on their share of insects. But now the whole system's gone out of whack. They, and by that I mean every insect in the world, become more aggressive and start to attack small towns and villages. Herbivores are everywhere, because why bother chasing after food? A lion can just wait around. Eventually, something's just gonna land in its lap. Lions, tigers, leopards, wolves, hyenas. They get lazy and fat. Wild animals fill city streets. The hottest new job? The control and capture of wild animals. And it's not exactly an easy job. You try chasing down a hyena in a three-story parking lot. By the way, all living things can now sort of live without food. But everyone still feels hungry. And if you don't eat, your body will definitely start feeling weak. Some vloggers tried to find out how long they could last without food. Turns out that the body can live forever without nutrients. But after about a month, you'll just fall into a deep dream. It's like your brain puts you into sleep mode. Unemployment is finally getting under control. There are millions of new construction jobs. What's the big new project? Well, people are building cities in the oceans and creating aerial towns held up by a million helicopter-like thingies. So now, everyone has a place to live. The only problem? Humans are running out of natural resources fast. 50 years later, the Earth is inhabited by more than 50 billion people. Almost every forest is long gone, and freshwater sources are running dry. People stop catching animals, they simply learn to live with them. You can have a monkey, a porcupine, and a monitor lizard in your house all at the same time. 
it seems that animals have figured out that there's no point being afraid of humans or each other. Plus, humans and animals are everywhere, so there's not a lot of options. People finally managed to stop insects from spreading everywhere. Chemists and biologists teamed up to create a substance that puts all pests in an internal sleep. It gets sprayed on every crop now. Scientists also generated artificial food using simple chemical elements. But still, there's not enough food. And even with those ocean cities and floating towns, people are running out of room faster than ever. Humans institute a ban on any new ocean cities. Photoplankton and seaweed are essential for maintaining oxygen levels. And since there are almost no trees left, oceans have become even more important. The floating towns turn out to be a ridiculously bad idea. They release a huge amount of greenhouse gases, which makes breathing more challenging. Next plan? Space. The International Space Station is no longer the only huge thing in Earth's orbit. The wealthy build orbiting mansions with simulated Earth conditions. These huge, fancy space homes are crazy expensive and eat up even more natural resources. 75 years later, Mars and the Moon have been colonized. But people don't live there. They sleep, kinda. To reduce the burden on the Earth, people decided to live off-planet in turns. One-third of the population remains on Earth. The other part goes into cryogenic sleep for five years at a time. Cryogenic capsules are sent to Mars and the Moon. As soon as a human wakes up, they return to Earth and switch places with someone else. Every year, the amount of people in cryo chambers gets bigger and bigger. The next idea is to send out a fleet of unmanned spacecraft to try and find a habitable planet or moon somewhere. But to do this, people need to use up even more natural resources – gold, copper, silver, water, wood, oil, minerals, and metals. Humanity starts exploring Mars and the Moon, desperate to find something useful for building better spaceships. Some Earthlings are now celebrating their 150th birthday and have become incredibly smart and wise. They understand that it's time to stop the uncontrolled population growth, at least for a while. In the next 60 years, not a single person is born. Astrophysicists are still looking for planets in space that are suitable for life, and still figuring out how to get there. 1,000 years later, and humans now inhabit a bunch of new Earth-like planets. Our home, Earth, is completely devastated. There are no humans left there. And for some reason, the further we get from Earth, the more people are born with immunity to the immortal molecule. After all this time, people are living normal life cycles again, just not on this planet. Let's talk about cyberpunk, a really cool genre of science fiction that started in the early 1980s. Its pioneer writers were really interested in how technology was changing society, especially with all the digital evolution happening at that time. One of the writers, Bruce Sterling, wrote an introduction to a book called Mirror Shades, which was like a guide to cyberpunk. He said that this genre is all about looking at technology in a new way, not just for science fiction writers, but for regular people too. It's like imagining a world where high-tech stuff and the cool underground culture mix together. The heroes of cyberpunk stories are mostly rebellious people who stand up against big companies and the boring mainstream. They believe in being unique and doing their own thing, even when the world tries to contain their efforts. These heroes are really good at taking things from popular culture and using them to express their own ideas and interests. They also know how to use computers to find out secret information and spread messages that go against the system. These days, cyberpunk themes are seen in more than just literature. You can find their influence in things like movies, video games, and even fashion. It does make you wonder though, could the future truly turn out to be what cyberpunk writers predicted? Truth is, all the cyberpunk literature is packed with mind-blowing technology that might just become a reality one day. Like augmented reality, for instance. 
Now, this might sound far-fetched, but we're actually getting closer to experience AR in our daily lives. I mean, some companies are already offering such devices. Right now, they're mostly used for gaming and entertainment. But soon enough, we might use them for virtual training, education, and even shopping for a new car or checking out a house. Next up, smart clothes. In cyberpunk video games, people are rocking these stylish garments that not only look cool, but also offer some serious protection. We're not quite there yet, but smart clothes are becoming a thing in our world too. You've probably heard of smartwatches and fitness trackers, right? Well, imagine clothing that can monitor your body's movements, suggest healthy habits, and adjust your body temperature. Some fashion brands are already exploring this exciting field. Now, let's dive into virtual reality. In one particular cyberpunk story, there's a feature where you can customize your own virtual reality experience. It's like stepping into someone else's shoes and reliving their memories. Now, VR is already pretty amazing in our world. We use it for medical purposes, gaming, and tourism. And here's something even cooler. Imagine being able to feel things in virtual reality. Yeah, it's called haptic technology, and it's being developed to make VR even more immersive. You could use it to control machines, learn in a virtual classroom, or even attend a concert with friends who are miles away. Last but not least, we have artificial intelligence. In a cyberpunk scenario, AI is everywhere, from brain analysis to taxis with intelligent controllers. Now, we might not have all that advanced AI just yet, but we're definitely making progress. You're probably familiar with all those virtual assistants featured on smartphones. Well, imagine them getting even smarter. AI is expected to be integrated into so many aspects of our lives, like fridges that can automatically order groceries when we're running low, self-driving cars, and delivery drones. And hey, AI is already helping companies suggest personalized content based on certain preferences. In the future, it might even help us find the perfect recipe for dinner or recommend the ideal cosmetic product just for us. Then, there's the potential for a brain-computer interface, or BCI for short. In a cyberpunk world, it's like a special connection between our brains and the internet that would allow people to virtually explore using just their minds. In the real world, scientists are already working on developing BCI systems. They can read the signals from our brains and turn them into commands. So instead of using a keyboard or a mouse, we might be able to control objects just by thinking. Right now, these BCI devices are being used in research settings, but someday, they could be used to support people. They could help with regaining useful functions and improve rehabilitation. It doesn't stop there, though. BCI could also help professionals like pilots and surgeons. It could make their natural skills even better and help them do their jobs with even more precision. But, you know, there are also some things we need to be careful about when it comes to this cyberpunk technology. In the cyberpunk world, there are serious problems to consider. One of the concerns, for instance, is that if we rely too much on technology, it might start making decisions for us. We might become less skilled at day-to-day -day tasks because we let the machines do everything for us. That's why we should focus on using our own resources to make our own choices. Another thing we need to watch out for is protecting our information. All sorts of security breaches are already happening all over the world. We need to make sure we have strong measures in place to keep our information safe. Science and technology are moving at an incredible pace these days. It's hard to pinpoint what the future might look like, but you surely have some sort of scenario in mind. Maybe you envision a world where robots and AIs, controlled by a handful of powerful corporations or individuals, dominate the scene with unjust power structures. Or perhaps you picture sprawling cities filled with skyscrapers and flying cars shrouded in perpetual darkness. And maybe the future seems bleak, where only a privileged few have access to nature, while the rest struggle to make ends meet on a harsh planet. 
In the cyberpunk world, our planet is either on the brink of a disaster or has already fallen into complete ruin. The stories consistently revolve around dominance and control, whether it's between the rich and the poor, corporations and the market, or humans and the AI robots they create. Cyberpunk is all about systematic and oppressive inequality. It's also about a future where most humans live in a highly mechanized society that disconnects them from the rest of the natural world. In this potential future, all the amazing technologies we've created don't really improve the lives of most people. In fact, they make things worse. It's not all bad, though. Sci-fi can be more than just entertainment. It has a way of inspiring and shaping our real world. Throughout history, designers have drawn inspiration from sci-fi for inventions for things like flip phones, self-driving cars, and even the concept of the metaverse. There are also many interesting alternatives for the future. Ever heard of solar punk? It's also a genre of speculative fiction, but one that envisions technology and the environment evolving together. The solar part is all about the power of solar energy while the punk part puts it in the same awesome group as other sci-fi genres like cyberpunk. So what does solar punk actually look like? Well, imagine visually stunning utopias that are all about the environment and being positive. In solar punk worlds, they've totally sorted out how to correctly use the planet's resources or are actively working together to fix it. It's all about coming together and being friends in the fight against a bleak future. When you enter a solar punk universe, you'll be greeted by groovy green tech, cities that are super walkable, and tons of lush greenery. It's all about living in harmony with nature, while still rocking the latest technology. It's like the complete opposite of cyberpunk, which is all about grimy cities, greedy corporations, and fear of outsiders. Solar punk is all about putting people first and recognizing the amazing connection between human intelligence and the Earth. One of the major influences on solar punk is Art Nouveau. This art movement is all about embracing organic and earthly shapes, and it fits perfectly with solar punk's vibe. Another cool reference for solar punk is the arts and crafts movement from the late 19th century. It was all about rebelling against unnecessary waste. <laughs>